36. Astatine is below iodine in the periodic table. So I2, AT2. What would be the properties of astatine? It forms diatomic molecules which dissociates more readily, meaning okay, astatine, because of the longer bond length compared to iodine, but it's easier to break apart the astatine than iodine. So it dissociates more readily. That is true. If you can't remember the bond energy of the group 7, you can refer to the data booklet where they show the bromine, chlorine, and iodine. And you can see that the trend as it goes down the group is easier to break apart the molecules. It reacts explosively with hydrogen, not true, right? It's not very reactive. The reactive ones are on top, so it doesn't react with hydrogen unless heated to quite a high temperature, a few hundred degrees. So this is not true. And then three must be wrong. It can oxidize iodine, iodide to iodine. Okay. So astatine and iodide, you will not expect iodine and acetate to form because okay, acetine is less oxidizing than iodine. So this is not correct. Which description of ammonium ion are correct? First of all, ammonium ion. If you talk about ammonia and its tree, it will be this structure and the lone pair will be forming a dative bond with a H plus. So the overall is NH4 plus. It contains 10 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then there's two in the inner shell of nitro of nitrogen we did not draw. So total is 10. Bond angle 109.5. It is tetrahedral. Four bond pair and zero lone pair. So tetrahedral 109.5. It has only three bonding pairs. It has four bonding pairs. So statement three is wrong. Which alkenes will react with steam, undergo hydration in the presence of the catalyst, and then we will get an alcohol that has a chiral carbon. I draw the three structures here so it's easier to see. Right, and then we will attempt to add the H and the OH to the molecules. So across the double bond, we have a H here, we have an OH here. Right? If Unless specified or not, we always follow the Markovnikov rule. The hydrogen will join the carbon that contains more hydrogen. So that's why I put the H here. If you were to flip them around, you will notice that there's also no chiral carbon. Okay, so number one, no chiral carbon. Number two, it's symmetrical. So the H and the OH doesn't matter if you flip or not. And then when we look across, there is a chiral carbon here. Four different groups. No, I'm sorry. There's no chiral carbon here because there's H and H. The chiral carbon is here. Okay, four different groups. One, two, three, four. So there's one chiral carbon here. The next one, I'll put the H here. I'll put the OH here. Right, and then we have a chiral carbon on this side. So 2 and 3 will be alcohols that have chiral carbons. Bromoethane undergoes conversion. Which one is nucleophilic? So we have CN, OH and NH2 replacing the BR. BR, if you recall, is electronegative. So the mechanism is we have a partial positive carbon here. And then being partially positive, you will be able to attract nucleophiles. Nucleophiles will have at least a lone pair. So we have CN minus, that's a nucleophile, a lone pair. We have OH minus, 
a lone pair of electrons and then we have we can use ammonia that also have a lone pair it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative charge right it can be a nucleophile with a, just a lone pair and all these lone pairs will be attracted to the carbon here so when we use cm minus we'll get product one oh minus product two and it's three we get product three so all these three are nucleophilic reactions and br is replaced so substituted right artificial sweetener what functional groups can be produced when it's under when it undergoes oxidation i have already listed out that these are the alcohols the hydroxys and they have primary alcohols and secondary alcohols throughout so when we oxidize them the primary it is possible to get the aldehyde and if you oxidize further we get acids for the secondary if you oxidize them we get ketones so aldehyde is possible carboxylic acid and ketones are also possible